so we're definitely excited right now. Yeah, and here we go. We're getting straight into it. Um, Nairo on the player one side, uh, rocking the green Med Knight, while Toronto Joe's rocking the plain old classic Med Knight. Oh, okay. Nairo's actually port four. Okay. Sides are mixed up. So now that that's out of the way, Nairo is known for his dominance in this game. Like, if you thought he was nice in Smash 4, in Brawl, he was a, like, tyrant. Very few people could even get close to his He's level. Taking a stock, you know, let alone winning the game. Yeah. It was actually absolutely insane what this kid can do. I guess I can't call him a kid anymore. Like, he's all grown up. He's taken names in multiple different games. But Brawl, it's his roots. And right now, he's, you know, actually very even, 92% each, which most people would not expect. Who knows, maybe Toronto Joe has been grinding it out a bit more. But obviously, Nairo still very comfortable right now, even though he is in a slight deficit. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of like you uninitiated in Brawl, uh, it's a very different game than you know Smash 4. For first off, especially this ditto right here, you're going to see that tornado a lot. It's very hard to hit Midnight out of the tornado once it starts. And um, it can really just poke your shield as well, unless you, the opponent uh, angles their shield while you're on it. Ooh, good stuff right there by Nairo. A little bit of a trap going all the way to the platform and still chasing. No tech by Joe. And this is perfect, but he actually did the nair a little bit too late, so the invincibility was gone. Yeah, I love that tornado recovery. Just throwing out a hitbox with you so that you can get all the way back on the stage safely. Very little ending lag on that, too. And Nairo, relentless as ever, chasing him all the way to the depths and landing that down air. Um, obviously, you know, Nairo was down by a little bit, but manages to take the first stock, and right now he's going to try to get that extra credit. Yeah, in this game, this is where champions are made, just like that, 50% immediately, and no DI to speak of. Nairo went straight up, tried to momentum cancel that, but still not quite enough. 50% though on the second stock, so he made a little bit of work happen. Yeah, and um, that's actually one of the moves that most people say you should almost never lose your stock to, a grounded up B, because you can definitely DI it. But maybe Nairo wasn't ready for it. We will never know. Ooh, good down air right there coming in from Toronto Joe, just kind of negating that upbeat attempt from Nairo. Yeah, now Nairo's in this tornado vortex. Nice dash attack to uh, get some more stage control by him. But look at that. Nairo's usage of um, shield poking is bar none one of the best. He always has the right hitbox once the shield starts to get low. Look at the patience right there. He went for the down smash, was a little too late. Um, unfortunately, it's very hard to time punishes when people are landing. You only have two frames to do it. And the trip right there didn't cost him the stock. Toronto Joe putting out a slight chuckle right there. Yeah. I love seeing the Brawl players. Oh, nice. But I love seeing the Brawl players like kind of chuckle when the trips happen. It's part of the game. It happens. But it very rarely like swings games. But when it does, uh, that's not a good feel. Nice DI by Nairo. Barely living that up here. And he's fighting back from the depths. Says, all right, man, I'm going to just go to the other ledge. Just a little bit safer right there. I thought Toronto was going to try to do the same thing. A get up attack. He took 23% for that. Yeah, eating two hits of the neutral air. And that uh, shuttle loop, too, is going to almost take Ooh, Rufio stop. off the top. No, right, nice yeah. air dodge mash. That SDI from Bayonetta playing a role in right now. And the <laughs> down smash, not going to do it. The back hit was very good. Nairo still chasing. Hits with the wrong hitbox. The glide attack does connect. Toronto Joe trying to fight his way back. And just Nairo so relentless right now. Going all the way down there. Invincible Nair not going to connect. But the reverse up B afterwards does. Yeah, the moment you get off stage against Nairo, like, he just always has more resources than you um, in the Meta Knight Ditto. If you get a hit off stage first, he'll have a few more jumps. He'll have like maybe one more special. And that's the thing that really makes the difference. You just capitalize on the small advantages until your stock is gone. And it makes it so scary because as he has those extra resources, he's always chasing the entire time. So it's just like, wow, how do you how do you keep on putting in more gas in your tank while you're driving? Yeah. Nairo finds a way to do it though. Yeah, it's absolutely wild what this guy can do. Here we go. The counter pick is Battlefield. Um, and since it's a ditto, I mean, the stage pick doesn't really matter too much. It's just more of a counter pick, what you like. And Toronto Joe, I guess he's uh, aiming to jump on the platform a little bit more, maybe platform cancel to keep his movement on par with Nairo. Um, if they end the bus, but so far, it's working out solidly for him. It's a very tight game. Cancel right there from Nairo. Still showing off the tech. It looks kind of like Toronto Joe, by all means, can take this game, but he's doing it just more of the, the winning exchanges way. He's not really using the tech that Meta Knight fully has at his disposal. Yeah, it's more just like solid neutral win. But look at that. Nairo is so smart. He turned around first because the back hit is stronger than the front hit. So he just guaranteed himself a kill. 
slide his way back all the way above, just knowing exactly what Toronto Joe wanted to do. Toronto setting up for Edgar. He gets down, he gets the footstool, refreshes the invincibility. Oh, but he lost the stock? Yes, he unfortunately timed that Nair a hair too late, and he traded with Nairo and got stage spiked. Yeah, and that was a hard stage spike, too. I doubt he expected to have to attack at that low of a percent. Nairo almost giving a courtesy stock, but he's just right back up at the ledge. Sensor even, but like Nairo snuck a stock in there, so now this gonna be very hard for Toronto Joe to bring it back. Yeah. And Nairo just so tricky, you know, he he started off so slow, but he's just speeding up more and more, playing better and better, gets that forward air and takes that stock with a two stock over Toronto Joe for game number two. Yeah. Just okay, I know this game has a reputation as being a very defensive game, but at the highest level, stuff like this happens. Stock fly, these guys are going in. And it really looks like an entirely different game from just what people expect to see out of Brawl. And I love it. Watching that play, this guy goes in. Alright, so far after that initial salvo, uh, Nairo gets the better end of it. But here comes Toronto getting some damage on the board. I like his use of the specials are great, but in the neutral he's getting outplayed or outplayed uh, bit by bit. Yeah. Definitely is. And I mean, part of it is just the speed that Nairo plays at. You see him executing almost everything perfectly. But speaking of that, great job by Toronto Joe dropping with that up air. And he does the tornado, but Nairo just gets out and nicks him with the forward air afterwards. It just makes it so difficult for Joe. But Joe does manage to get back on the stage. I thought we were going to see him with punish, but he misses. Good back air into Nair. The conversion by Joe was great right there. Absolutely. Here comes uh, Toronto Joe again, using that forward tilt to get Nairo up in the air, force a jungle situation. And I think this is where Toronto Joe started to shine. These juggles are looking crisp from him, and that shield mode from the Nair. Can you see him just using positioning so well to get these advantages? Um, even, even if he goes for a first option, his second option is immediately cover the ground above him because he knows what Nairo wants. But at the end of the day, it was not enough to get that first stock, and Nairo finds an opening. And history repeats itself, but he, Toronto Joe ties it up immediately after. Yeah, I'm loving Toronto Joe's uh, edge guards right now. Nair, 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 good stuff. Nice. An up air out shield. That comes out in two frames. So if you're like touching Bend Knight shield in your bubble, you're going to get hit. Very few characters have the frame data to suggest that. And it's just their swinging, but you know, Joe definitely has uh, great option co option coverage when he's below Nairo, but Nairo is just attacking from every angle. From the side, from below, it does not make a difference. Good, almost reverse anti-air by Joe right there with that town air. Yeah, These, this game three, so a lot of data has been collected, and Toronto Joe's doing a great job putting it to use. Nice power shield, and oh no! <laughs> oh man, you hate to see it like that. Sakurai said, you know what, this punish would be too good. Let's slow it down a bit. Yeah. Oh, kind of odd DA or DI on that neutral there. Toronto Joe. Oh, this time it's uh, Toronto Joe, Joe's turn to die off the top from uh, up B. Yeah, I think maybe he was caught DIing the wrong way, trying to do an up air or something of that nature. So F tilt from these players come out so quickly. Yeah. Do, do, do. Nice. And yeah, Mad Max Flat Attack is actually a very strong build move. Just in case you thought this character like, you know, needed something else to kill with. He can kill you from his up B, his glide attack, his down smash, his up smash. You know what, just pick your poison. He has a lot. Up tilt doesn't kill, but it definitely hurts. Yeah. And Joe definitely still in this, but you know, he needs to win this game, or unfortunately for him, he gets to visit the losing bracket. Yeah, and we're going all the way to top six today, so we only have to get more to, you, more to bring you today. And actually, I think if Toronto Joe wins or loses this, then um, he has to wait until tomorrow to play more. Yes. Yeah. Whoa! The grab, I mean, the grab after the glide attack, a little tricky right there. Nairo playing very dangerously. And very smart by Nairo. She used the invisibility of the grounded shuttle loop to get himself out of dodge there. Toronto has to grab the ledge, but it is Meta Knight. What do you have? Just re grab the ledge, and he gets up in Nairo's face. He only gets a grab for it, though. That could have been way worse for him. Up till not killing yet. Nairo's still chasing him out there. You see him keeping that positioning and always being in. Oh! Yeah. Such a quick uh, ledge grab from Nairo. Like, there's no way that 
after all of that, you would expect it to end with an Edgehog on a yeah. character with five jumps, an up B, a side B, a character who can get back from the brink of almost anything. Yeah. But, I mean, Nairo had the hard read on that, and that was just brilliantly executed by him. So well done. And a lot of people forget, because they see Nairo in Smash 4 currently, that, you know, edge guarding was an option in Brawl. Yeah. Nairo fully aware of the mechanics of the game and using them to the fullest, and just phenomenal performance right there. Yeah, but Toronto Joe looking like no slouch. He actually did a great job, especially in the uh, games two and three. Yeah. Keeping on pace with Nairo for the first two stops or so. And let's not forget, he got stage fight game number two, and it still was relatively close. Yeah, he did um, very well there. So he is guaranteed top five. That's the good news for him. Um, the bad news, he does have to, you know, cool off a little bit, doesn't get to play again until tomorrow. Um, where I believe Tantalus and Reslev will bring in everything home for you guys. Yes, and there's a foreign language screen as well. So awesome. for those of you who don't speak English, you might not understand me, but we got you tomorrow. Hola, como estas? Ni hao ma? Oi, tudo bon? Bonjour, come et That's all, right, all I got, got for you. You got like five more languages than me there. Actually, I only know how to greet. <laughs> but it's fake that's until you, you make it. There you go, that's the spirit, that's the spirit. All right, but welcome back everyone. Super Smash Con 2018, and we're bringing you Super Smash Brothers Brawl. And you know, in this community, this game doesn't get the love that it deserves, I feel. Yeah. It really started the fire for so many of us in the Smash 4 scene. And uh, even beyond that, like, these players you might recognize in Smash 4, like Nairo, Seagull Joe, starting Brawl. Brawl, three champions. That's what I say. Uh, I think my mic's muted. Oh. Yeah. But. Are we muted? Okay, so here we have Zan um, from SoCal taking that long flight all the way out here uh, against our resident Wolf, Sonic, yeah, Wolf, Sonic, Diddy, whatever game it is, he has a character in it, Seagull Joe, dude's a fiend. And Seagull Joe, uh, a huge fan of Wolf, he is so excited that this guy is back in Smash. Um, in Ultimate, where he will be coming out, courtesy of Sakurai saying everyone is coming back. So we're going to see Wolf Bush Wario. A um, little bit of an unorthodox matchup, only because Wario is not the most popular, and Wolf is obviously good. However, he's not seen that much with the likes of Meta Knight and Ice Climbers making their way around everywhere. Yeah, Wolf was one of those characters who got exploited by the top tiers to the point where people just dropped him. Except Seagull Joe. He's one of the few people who's like strong enough and some might say stubborn enough to make this character pick work for him all the way through. Give him a good back air and that's all he needs. Yeah, actually. You know, while I've been watching Joe's sets most of the day, I've been like trying to guess over under 50 back airs. He's been over for like at least more than half of them. Back air is his uh, poison. He's already done about four. Yeah. He'll now make it five. But 79 to 51, good up air coming in from Zen right there to alleviate a bit of that pressure off of the ledge. And Seagull just now kind of saying, hey, I have a lead, come to me, I'll shoot a couple lasers, but Zen quickly found an answer to it. And something that I do want to talk about a little bit is, like, you said Wario's not a very popular character, and there's a reason for that. Um, he gets exploited by this game's mechanics harder than almost any other character, unfortunately. So most characters in this game, um, if you grab Wario, and especially a dash grab, and you just, you know, don't even pummel, just release, he usually can get like forward smashed, up smashed by almost everyone here. But Zan's like, you know what? If you don't grab me, I don't have to worry about that. And look at that movement. Look at the dribbling from Zan. He's making the items work for him. He okay. is quick 11%. I didn't even know you could have two tiles. Or three. three. Yeah, he has three out there. All right, man. A little bit of wide toss right there. Gets a bit of pressure. And he's just keeping it so difficult. But a back air <laughs> at 127%. Wario was not supposed to lose his stock at that percentage. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, I think he was feeling himself a little bit too hard there. He was going for the item, maybe trying to run back a little bit, some cheeky. But um, that bad guy is going to catch him slipping, and now we have a relatively even game. Seagull Joe's only like maybe two hits behind. There's one. There's a trip. Uh, no, actually not getting to it that he needs. And we see Waft on deck right now. A little bit scary position for Seagull to be in. Obviously, he is not stopping by any means. I saw that set up earlier as well. Back air, back air, punish the air dodge with the down smash. Yeah, after the second back air, you really start to panic a little bit more. And um, something else that might make you panic a bit is the WAP that Zen has on deck. It has super armor, and it definitely will kill with this percentage. So Seagull has to keep that in mind, but currently is definitely not letting it affect his game plan. Yeah, and especially, I feel like Zen is waiting for the third stock for that. Since it just kills so early, um, and you're on pace to take a stock now, just, you know, do what you can. And here we go, the chain grabs. And Zan having to read on that shine, too. 
but he just kind of blows that mark way too early. But it's okay, because we could get something going here. No, Zen. No, Joe, everyone dies. No one makes it out alive. That was such a cheeky setup to jump past the ledge and actually do that fight. Joe clearly wasn't ready for it. Didn't even try to match out, actually. He just accepted his fate and said, I'll fall out when I fall out. Yeah. I mean, it could have been worse. Both of you lost your stock, so it was an even game before it's an even game now. The only 2% separating these players at the moment. Joe now taking a slight lead with that back air and using that shine. You know, there is invincibility on it, and Joe is making beautiful use of it. Oh, nice. Wario has such high aerial mobility. He was able to drift through with an air dodge and just get that forest match. Now Joe has to fight his way back down. He does just that. We got a grab release, but we don't have the second hit of the up smash. And maybe that was part of the reason Joe's been up there. He said, well, I can do grab releases up here into up smash. But, you know, it didn't pay off that much. It was only a little bit of damage at the end of the day. Those back airs though, definitely paying off. Giving Joe the lead up by 11% right now, but Zen quickly turns the tide, throws that bike in the air. We're gonna see a little bit of dribbling again when that disappears. Oh, oh no. but Joe gets it in this time. Yeah, it just drifts over to steal Joe's court, and now he goes right back, Zen gets it, and that might be the thing that wins Zen the game. Look at that, he is dribbling all over, and he gets stage control by punching the laser. And he can still bite. So even if Joe starts trying to shield, bite is still an option that Zen has. Oh, that pressure was great. Excellent defense for both players right there. Zan, though, I think he's a little bit closer to um, finishing out the stock and taking this game. This is a best of five set, but like I'm sure no one wants to drop that game one. He should have a waft. Yeah, yeah, he'll have a waft any second now. Um, obviously, it's not showing, but after 50 seconds, it's actually when it's at its strongest point. A lot of people are unaware that just because there's no visual cue, waft is still on deck and it's still a potent option. Zan poking a little bit above the ledge, getting some room to get back up there. Now here's the 11th hour. Who will get the final hit? Wow, and that deck is, and he drifts straight through him. Mike, maybe SDI, maybe just, you know, poor linkage, but still, Joe, on notice. Forward air, good DI by Zan staying alive. Air doesn't do it yet again, but the force match is the finest mark. It does have some armor to it. Joe retreating back to his game plan. Back air, back air, back air. Tag to Zan with one, and now Zan has to make it through. And when you have more than percent on you, it's hard to get off the ledge. Ooh, look at that. Siegel staying alive. Nice DI. And wow, he snuck that underneath the shine, and Zan's going to take game one nail by him. I wonder if Joe is trying to be next level and actually shine and use that one frame of invincibility I think to actually was. evade it. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, Joe kind of switched up his style and said, now that you're in kill range, I'm going to keep trying to hit you with forward air. Zan patiently waited, figured out the pattern, and then just went in. And that's how he managed to take the game. Yeah. So he's got to run it straight back. And I agree with it. It was so even before that, you know, either or. Just keep it on the um, stage you're familiar with. And Joe having a much better start right now. 59% unanswered. Zan's definitely going to have to dig deep to find an opening because Joe clearly made some adjustments and is paying off currently. Yeah. I feel like whenever you play Joe, sometimes you flick that switch that just makes you say, I'm not going to approach you anymore. Like, you can tell in his plays, like, you have to come to me, you have to play my game. And my game is a lot harder than the one that you just played. What smart, smart. Yeah. So actually, the first time Zan did that, obviously it paid off. The second time, Joe thought he was going to do it and went for a down smash, but Zan didn't do it, so nothing came out. But Joe, clearly aware of the habit, said, hey, this time you're going to do it, and I'm going to take stock number one. And he was sub 30% when he did it, too. Yeah, this first stock is looking absolutely fresh from single Joe right now. He's shooting less lasers. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but look at this. He's getting Woo all these uh, Looks a little melee that. like that. Yeah, I like that. It'll shimmy on him just a little bit. Maybe a sign of panic though from Joe, and here we go. We got a chain grab going. Zan's so good at calling out when he's gonna shine out. That's interesting. Get off of your bike, fight me. Yeah. Excuse me, sir, walking only. Thank you. Good power shot into that grab. Zan's gonna get that damage again. Four smash dance it. Uh, I guess we're just out of here. I guess he believes in his tech skill. He's not going to mess up. I'm going to keep it going. Welcome to being a space animal. <laughs> Another one. 
<laughs> oh, did he mix his DI on that? Nah. Okay, Seal Joe's still, still staying alive and actually finding a back air after that long chain grab. I feel like we should start doing a little bit of the Yipes commentary. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 Yipes. A legend. Isaiah right, trapped down on that ledge. Chilling finally finds his way back. Joe still chasing. Gets hit with the up air and loses that stock. And right now, Zan trying to dribble. Managed to get one of them. Yeah. And still has that waft on deck. Shout to that. I mean, one is really all you need. Granted, you're playing against a character with a reflector, but you can still make these strings work if you can get through these lasers. And Zan, unfortunately, could not. Last stop for him. Ooh, that is meaty, meaty F tilt right there coming in from Joe. And Joe up an entire stop. Even though it feels like this match is close, Joe has a commanding lead at the moment. All right, here we go. Wario has to make it back. Nice air dodge. I love Zan's air dodges at the ledge. They're so smart. But his wobs, 0 for 2. Actually, he's 0, 1 for 3 on this. Yes. 1 for 3. So he misses that one. That one might be a bit more crucial since uh, that might have killed Joe if the DI was slipping. Down throw, what's gonna happen after? Not much. Joe goes for that jab to try to catch him, but you know, Zan just kind of dips. I like a little setup right there to push him off the ledge into a follow up. And Joe, it looks like he just chooses a, a, a new aerial every 15, 20 seconds. And yeah. the latest one was down here. Just enough to keep you on the toes. And he should have his bike back. Okay, he doesn't even need it. That rip from uh, Wario is the highest in the game. This could be big though. This chain grab is key. 111 on him so far. He needs to find a kill or a setup off of this. Hands, 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 hands. Is it, does it stop? I man, think it has to stop at like 300. My man can't get away. Right. It's kind of like the clingy girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah, Will you leave me alone? Nah, I'm still here. Come back to me. Everyone's a text. Where are you? How's it <laughs> <Where> going? <laughs> What's up? Are you here yet? Oh, <laughs> he finally, finally gives him a break. All right, and then trying to break that bike so he can get a wheel. But Seal Joe is one too, but not finding anything off that, just chucking it off stage. Very patient from Stan. I like what I'm seeing from him. Just throws it down, trying to maybe catch Seagull Joe overcommitting on something, but Joe's not taking the bait. He has a stock and some change to make up, so why would he ever press forward? We get part of that down smash connected right there, fortunately for Zan. And that pressure from Zan is just so nice. Are we going to see an edge guard? Whoa, oh, we do, and he managed to get it, but he's at 131%. I wonder if it's too little, too late. Yeah, Wolf's up B actually has like one no drift to it after you finish. It's kind of depressing how little you go. Speaking of kind of depressing, that DI, he went straight off the side. I think he was trying to uh, drop beneath the platform, was holding down. And yeah, that was a straight line to the blast zone. It's, it's um. Three, two, one, go! Here we go, getting to this next game. So 1-1 one, one right now, Joe easing himself back up after that unfortunate um, wall setup at the end of game one. So now going back to Smashville, these guys are trying to slow it down. I think Zan that, like, is respecting Joe a lot more. Meanwhile, Joe, I think he's just playing his game. I don't think he respects anyone. <laughs> yeah. He's just doing his thing as usual, getting those back airs, great nares. What's the setup? Ooh, the air dodge this time around. Does manage to get back and a little bit of dribbling. but. He manages to miss, and then that forward smash does as well. Oh, there you go. That shine has some invincibility on it. So if your strings aren't airtight, Wolf is liable to get out of that. And Joe just making it oh so difficult to get back up off of the ledge. The back air is coming in. Now with a little bit of the laser game. And this is a little reminiscent of uh, the last game. It seems like Joe figured out a game plan, and Zan's just having a very difficult time getting past this obstacle course. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, most likely was so long that, you know, Wario, he has like maybe, he's like three foot tall, looks like. Like those lips are so stubby, like this isn't actually fair. <laughs> and he has a gun. I mean, Wario has a motorcycle and like, I don't know, indigestion. So he's trying out here, but. It's, it's rough out here for our Italian guy. I'm surprised Joe missed that punish right there. You know, when Wario's gonna up B, you might as well just swing with the down smash. 
Also, uh, one thing Joe hasn't gone for at all is a ledge hog. Yeah. Um, when Wario's forced to be, you can't just kind of ledge hog and generally take his soccer, at least get a punish. Afterwards, a platform cancel into the back air. Tricky, tricky seagull, Joe. Yeah, now Joe's really starting to run away with the set. He's starting to turn it up. He's taking first blood the last two games so far. But here we go, the Waft is online. Like you said, it does have armor. It's not just, like, it's strong. There's a stronger version of it at like 50 seconds, you said. But um, yeah, there's still more than enough to get the job done, especially right now. If he opts to go for it, but no. Joe just drifts down, turns the tables, and still keeps his feet on the ground. <laughs> he just casually walks away. <laughs> and Zan is just, he's so sure that Joe's going to move forward. He, Whips the waft, and I'm sure Seagull feels like he's in a much better position now because of it. Yeah. I want to be as confident in myself as Nan is in his waft one day. Look, man, one, one day at a time. Yeah. One day at a time. I like that. All right, but so far, Zan, like you said, just having a hard time keeping pace. Joe's, um, after the first stock, which he plays like a more aggressive tempo, now he's starting to slow it down, put that slow burn on, and make sure that Zan is completely finished before he takes him out the other. A little bit of patience being displayed by both players, and Zen swung first, and actually he's the one that got hit for it. Fourth match, you know, Zen trying to end this stock. Seagull Joe just being also evasive at any given time. Misses that grab, but it was still a good option right there. Oh, good tech roll in by Zen. Yeah, absolutely excellent. That potentially saved his uh, life, or at least like saved him from getting hit the laser. Now another back there is going to find his mark. Nice patience by Zan to hang on the bike until he's in a good position to get back on stage. You can tell Joe wants to finish this. But you can also tell he wants to finish it without getting hit. Yes. He wants to like hold on to these stocks as long as possible. That is, that is it. Run up forward air. And right now, three stocks to one. Zan has his work cut out for him. Does he manage it? He does at least get a stock off. It's still at a deficit. But, you know, not having your opponent at three stock, being three stock in this game is just so devastating for your momentum. That is one of the things you want to avoid at all costs. Yeah, momentum, mentally also. Like, you just really don't want to uh, get three stocked at all. You also don't want to get back here three times in a row. God dang it, Seagull Joe. I mean, it's Joe. You expect it after a certain point. Seagull Joe is synonymous with back airs in the NBA region. It doesn't even matter what true. game it is. If there's a backwards facing aerial, Seagull Joe will find it and abuse it. <laughs> Gets a jab. Good SDI right there by Zan, though, getting through. And Zan at 108%. Still not going to lose his stock for another 20 to 30, barring something extreme. But he needs to make something happen oh so quickly. And also, he needs to break that bike, because if he gets sent off stage very far, he won't have that recovery option. He'll have to burn his part, which I don't think he wants to do right now. Yeah, break that bike, get a new one. There Joe's going to assist him in the process. Yeah. I don't think Joe wanted to have that there either. I think we're going to see a glide toss attempt. Oh, oh, no, he tries to throw it, and Joe is having none of it. Going to throw it down. Here's him another obstacle, but Zan says, thank you very much. I wanted this anyway. Yeah, he gets a tire, and he gets off the ledge, too. Zan playing on borrowed time to 141%. Look at the redness of those numbers. It's only getting deeper. Yeah. And Joe's still very healthy at a 47. You know, Zan has to make this comeback and then has to do it again. Yeah, you really have to dig deep for this. And also, you can't afford to be eating those lasers. That's just money on the table that you can't afford to be leaving. And I think it's only a matter of time before Joe runs up and back airs. A, it's, that's it's the always, option I was going to say, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before Joe back is. He's going to move it up. 2-1 and Zan going to the Toon Link. Going to try something a little different. Currently, that Wario has not been paying off for. Yeah, but we see Joe smiling. I remember him talking about this matchup. He thinks this matchup is pretty free for Wolf. As to the logistics, why, I couldn't really tell you. But if I had to guess, I mean, Wolf does have his reflector. And also, like, I don't know, Wolf's back air is pretty much a sword in and of itself. And Toon Link is a stubby small child who just left the island, so. It also looks like this laser is playing a major role. Yeah. You know, Zen not really able to get by it. And when he finally does, Joe just pressures him, pushes him off, and then rinse and repeats. Look at that back air. And nice, you, again, using that invincibility. People forget about that, but um, if your strings aren't completely perfect, Joe, or Wolf, I say Wolf, but it's really Joe, he's like the last of Wolf. But like, Wolf can really just shine out of that. 
A dying breed, man, a dying breed. Yeah, they're in danger. Please help save the wolf. We're trying, Sakurai's trying, man, and ultimately he said, hey, you guys get one more chance. Yeah, it's a wolf preservation attempt. <laughs> 2018, 2019, no, 2018. Dang, that's soon. Yeah. It'll be 18, it'll be 18. Yeah. Good power shield into that grab. Good punish afterwards. Seagull Joe completely ready for that tech. You know, and that's one of those scenarios where he could have actually did a tech roll away. It is a little bit harder, but had he done that, he would still have that stock to talk about. Yeah, but Joe had an option no matter what way you said. He just had to read it, and that time he guessed right. And Joe perfectly content with the pace of this match. Get a couple hits in, get a few combos, back up and grab, and then maybe um, back up and shoot his laser, and then uh, get a grab occasionally. Yeah, I mean, especially for uh, Toon Link. Like, Toon Link doesn't really have a great grab. In this game, like, in Brawl, it, or not Brawl, in Smash 4, it's a kill throw. Like, you have that killing back throw, but in Brawl, you really don't have too much. So, Seagull Joe can kind of just sit and shield sometimes. Yeah. And then still trying to get by, but, you know, it's just so difficult. And the combos are not the same that it is in the, the next iteration of this game. But more importantly, Toon Link is known for their projectile game, and Wolf has all the tools needed to avoid it. Nice down smash right there out of shield. Knowing that Zan had to land somewhere in that zone, just cover both sides. All right, that was smash, still not quite killing. Wolf falls like decently fast, so, uh, you know, fall speed influences how quick you die off the top. And the laser just coming right back in again. Zan pulling out bombs, using boomerangs and arrows, but the defense of Seagull Joe looks impenetrable at the moment. Obviously, Zan can still make it back. He is in top eight for a reason, but he's definitely gonna have to dig deep and make a couple adjustments if he wants to continue this tournament bracket. Yeah, and using the down air to stall a little bit there, too. And oh, that's the edge hog. No bomb? No bomb. Now, this is looking absolutely rough for Zan. He has three stops to make up. He waited one? an entire set, basically, to pull that out. This is potentially the last game, and Joe does his first edge guard attempt, and it works. Yeah. I mean, it's smart, too, because when you throw it out too often, there are ways that people can't punish you in this game. Legend of really doesn't last all that long. Scars to the edge, a little bit of that tech coming in. Seagull Joe demonstrating his knowledge and mastery of the character. Now Zan playing patient, but it might be too little too late. Oh yeah, I forgot about that too. <laughs> Toon Link just has his shield, he can just stand there through the lasers. I guess Zan just remembered it, and Zan also remembered how to land that up smash. Finally, taking a stock off of Seagull Joe, only at 26%, definitely not the worst place to be in. Back air, not able to get anything afterwards, but every bit of damage counts right now for Zan. Yeah, but right now, it's counting against him, too. Look at all those lasers he just ate. And he just walked up and ate a grab. Lost a lot of stage control for that, too. But Zan fighting back still. I like the usage of the Zare. But, I mean, it's a hook shot. Like, you're fighting against a space age technology equipped wolf. <laughs> like, what can you do? And then he's just biding his time. He's like, maybe Breath of the Wild me can do it. Yeah, I got to grow up a little bit. Just a little bit. And that walk by Wolf looks so menacing after down throw, just casually walks at you. See all this space gear. I love it. Like, it's just like, well, it feels like an actual wolf. He's just kind of stalking you, waiting for you to do something. See it again? Yeah, that's the stuff. I love that. <laughs> Give me more of that. Joe trying to find an opening, and Zan finally giving him a dose of his own medicine, making it difficult for Joe to approach. Unfortunately, though, the onus definitely is on Zan to approach because as we're about to hit that three-minute mark, he's down a stock and a lot of percent. Yeah, and that back air could do it. No, excellent DI momentum canceling by Zan. There's still not too much that he can do right now. Look at all that, the barrage of lasers, the bomb about to open your hands. This is rough, this is, <laughs> this is rough. And Joe at like the max distance for this laser. He's throwing it out knowing he is not in any danger of getting hit by anything. Even if Toon Link manages to connect something, he knows that that projectile is not gonna do as much damage as this laser. Yeah, not giving Joe, or not giving Zan. Joe's not giving Zan anything for free. There we go, English card. He just ran through and did that. That Seagull Joe grin, he knows how just cheeky that was. But yeah, uh, Seagull Joe's gonna move on through that bracket 